Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Home Seller Mistakes. In this week's video, I'm gonna talk about some of the most costly, biggest mistakes that I'm seeing home sellers make in the market. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I assure you, you're gonna walk away with the knowledge you need to sell your home for more money and to do it quicker. Real quick, if this is your first time at the channel, my name is Hassan, I'm a real estate agent in the Vancouver area. And when I'm not making videos like this, I'm helping clients buy and sell real estate all across the Lower Mainland and the Fraser Valley. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in and you wanted to chat with me one on one, you can book me for a free call in the Calendly link below and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video. All right, I want to jump right into it. I'm going to start with the first home seller mistake I see all the time and it's rushing to get the listing on the market. I'm going to talk about a couple of instances where I see this. Number one uh, is when you know a seller wakes up, they haven't really decided to list their home for the market. Something significant happens in their life that makes them start to ponder, okay, I need to do something, I need to put this home on the market. They call the first agent that maybe they see on a sign, they see it on a bus stop, it's a relative of theirs, they call them in, they say, let's get this property up on the market and they're rushing to get that listing to go live. So for example, the realtor comes in on say a Tuesday or a Wednesday or even a Thursday and they say, perfect, sign right here. We're gonna have you on the market on Monday, ready to go. My photographer is gonna come in tomorrow morning and we're, we're gonna put this on the market. We're gonna blast it out. I see this happen in two instances. Uh, number one is often when a seller is worried about missing out on a hot market. They're worried that if they take a little bit longer to prepare that property for sale, that they're gonna miss out on the hot portion of the market. The reality is this, is that uh, yes, markets change and they do change quickly, but they don't change frequently. So what I mean by that is you're not gonna have up and down swings in our real estate market. You're generally gonna have an increased period where properties will go up and then they'll come down for a little bit. So you're very, the likeliness of you actually listing, pushing the listing a week later, and now all of a sudden missing a hot market is very low. The benefit to actually taking the time to prepare the property to list, get it on the market when it's ready to go, far outweighs rushing the listing and trying to capture that, that sort of short-term gain. So rushing the listing almost always places a home on the market that is not show ready, it's not ready to go, the marketing is not up to speed, not enough time to get buzz surrounding the property. The second time that I see this is, and this is something you should not do when the market is warm, but I see a lot of home sellers, they'll go out looking for their next property first, they'll go to an open house, they'll see a property they love, they're like, wow, I must have this property. They come home and they're like, okay, I have to quickly list my property because I need to sell it first. Often they wanna write a subject to sale offer on the property, which really doesn't have a lot of strength in our market. And again, they're rushing that listing. Really what you wanna do if your plan is to move into another property to upgrade, for instance, is you want to take the time to prepare your listing first, get it on the market, go for a longer completion when you're looking at offers, and then simultaneously you can be looking at new properties. But again, the disadvantage to rushing a property and making sure it's not ready, uh, you know, far outweighs any sort of gain of trying to be fast. It's better to make sure that property is ready. ready. The other thing is, you know, if you have a realtor come in, truthfully, and honestly, a lot of realtors are probably not gonna love this video, but if you have a realtor come in on say a Friday or a Saturday, and they're telling you we can list it for Monday, we'll have photos done tomorrow morning, we're good to go. Their photographer's probably not that good. And, and there's a chance that they're not even using professional photography. I see this all the time with listings still, uh, where you'll see listing photos where you know you can see the hand of the photographer in the bathroom mirror, things like this. Um, the photographers that your realtor works with, they should be busy, they should be booked. They should be coveted. So for example, the photographers and the videographers that I use, um, I need to give them up to a week's notice. They're the same photographers that are filming $10 million listings that I'm hiring to film my $800,000 condo. So just be wary as well of the agent that comes in over the weekend and says, sign this now, we're gonna list on Monday. They may not also being 
making sure that your property is ready to go and is at its prime for the market. All right, so the next mistake that I see happen all the time is not preparing the listing well. And I'm gonna preface this by saying not taking care of the little things. And the little things, the way I classify that is you know the things that you have around your home, like the little quirks that you're able to deal with, maybe you haven't dealt with them for a long period of time because they're not affecting your life, but you know, you're know you okay dealing with these little quirks. For example, uh, maybe it's in the bathroom, you need uh, some re-caulking to happen, maybe you need a deep scrub of that tub, uh, maybe it's, for example, um, like the handle on your dishwasher is a little wonky, but you figured out a system, you know how it works, so you leave it. Um, these are the things that you wanna take care of, the, the easy things that will be noticed by buyers. I say that for a couple reasons. Number one, you know, I, I'll backtrack a bit because I think sometimes sellers are like, it's such an easy thing for a buyer, they can take care of it. I even see this sometimes when listing or viewing new construction developments where developers don't fully finish the product. They think, okay, I'll take care of it after we have an accepted offer. This could be things like, you know, the walkway up to the home, the walkway stones are a little wobbly, you know, things like that you want to take care of, especially stuff that uh, is based on a first impression. So stuff that when you're walking up to the property, how is the landscaping in front of your home? Uh, the reason why you want to take care of these little minor things is it triggers a response in buyers where when they notice these things, they start to wonder and think, okay, if this is what I can see, what are the things that are wrong with this home that I can't see? It triggers a negative response. And we always want to remember that for buyers, you know, they're gonna remember a couple of things. Oftentimes they're viewing five, six properties on any given day and they're very likely to remember a first impression and they're very likely to remember one of the last things that they see or experience on the way out. Uh, it's called recency effect because again, they're seeing all these things. They're gonna be able to recall the first impression and, and the last. And so I've used this in my business. I'll give an example. I had a multifamily listing last year. It had uh, four residential units and it had a commercial uh, unit that needed a massive renovation at the bottom. So what I would do at all, if at all possible, is I made sure that the store, the retail, and just to give you an idea, the floor uh, in this store was sloped. There are actually some areas where it had sunken in so much that we had to avoid it for liability reasons because we were concerned buyers would fall through the floor. So I would do everything in my power to make sure that the store did not get shown first and it did not get shown last. I couldn't have that be the first impression and I didn't want that to be the most recent thing that a buyer was gonna remember. So think about those two things is that what do people see first and what are they gonna experience and feel last? And focus on those areas and the little things when preparing your home. So the next mistake that I see sellers make, it does have to do with preparing the home, is when it comes to decluttering and staging the home. Now, decluttering is a must. It's the most easy thing that we can do as home sellers uh, to prepare our property for the market and to allow buyers to envision their own things in the property. So when I see decluttering, uh, for example, we want pretty much everything off of the kitchen counters. Of course, we might leave um, the coffee maker out and a couple little appliances to show how, how things can be spaced out on the counter, but you wanna get rid of you know, all the personal items, you wanna get rid of uh, anything that you have on the floor really that's not furniture. You want to get rid of all of those items. I always tell clients, you know, prepare for the move in advance when you're decluttering. You're going to have to move it anyways. It can be a daunting task. Start with it. And, you know, most clients I think do understand this is, okay, get rid of the clutter. That's very important. You also want to get rid of or take down, not get rid of, you want to take down uh, personal pictures, anything that when people walk into their home, they're going to feel like a guest or a visitor in your home. And your realtor should be able to help you with the things that you need to take, take out. So declutter and also staging. This is, this is quite an important thing. So it goes without, I shouldn't say it goes without saying, but the statistics show that if you stage your home, you're gonna sell for more money than if you have an unstaged 
property. Now there are two types of staging out there. There is virtual staging, uh, which realtors through our marketing companies, we can take care of. Um, and then there's physical true staging. That's gonna have a higher cost to it. It's gonna have a better effect. Uh, virtual staging is staging on the pictures themselves. I will sometimes use this if the budget is not there for uh, there to be a full actual stage. If the timeline is not there to make the stage work, uh, then we can use virtual staging. But actual staging, generally speaking, you will get your investment back. You will sell quicker. Um, so consider staging, especially I, I find a lot of times, you know, I'm helping clients sell, for example, condos, newly constructed buildings, haven't had a tenant yet, it's brand new, we're putting it on the market. I think these are excellent properties to stage. And the reason for this as well is if you're up against a lot of competition, which generally you are when there's a lot of units in that same building, you have to have your property stand out. So your realtor should be coming to you with staging options to show you uh, and, and consider strongly in the preparation process having the property staged or virtually staged before placing it on the market. All right, so another costly mistake that I see sellers make is not being accommodating with showings. Now, I do want to preface this because sometimes it's a marketing strategy for us realtors, at least when we're first listed on the market, to hold off on showings until the weekend. And oftentimes you will do this because you want everyone to show up at the same time, you want there to be buzz surrounding the property, and you want other people to see other people that want your property. This will generally you know, drive up the value or the sale price of your home. But beyond that, if you've been on the market for a week, week and a half, two weeks, uh, you really wanna be very accommodating for showings and you want to accommodate as much as possible the last minute showings. What I've found in my experience is oftentimes the most serious buyers are the ones that are booking the showings at the last minute. Something has gone on in their world where they need to make a quick decision. And so they are often sending us notices to book a showing a few hours prior or four hours prior, whatever it might be, they always want to view it. Sometimes it's same day they want to view it. I always do everything in my power to get these buyers in. They generally, if they like the property, they tend to write the offers. So keep that in mind. A last minute showing is not someone trying to be a pain in the butt. A last minute showing is someone who's desperate, who's urgent, who needs to see your property. So try and accommodate that as much as possible and try and not be in the home when the home is being shown. It, it goes without saying a little bit, but I've shown many properties where the homeowners are still there. It can be a little bit trickier when there are tenants involved, like often the tenants will stay in the home and there's a bit of an understanding surrounding that. But if you're a homeowner, you wanna achieve the best price. Going back to what I said about Buyers need to come in and feel like it's their own home. You don't want them to feel like they're visitors in your home. And one way to make them feel like visitors that may be overstaying their welcome is by being in the home while we're showing it. So if at all possible, leave the home, go for a walk, maybe go for a drive. It will help you sell the home. It will help you get a better price. All right, so I told you if you stuck around to the end of the video, I was gonna give you the most important costly mistake I see and it's miss pricing the property. I'm gonna explain this in a couple of different ways. Very often I see on the market and my own sellers um, wanting to list high on the market and trying to attract that one offer at the higher price. And what happens with a property that is priced too high for the market, and I'll touch on how you can tell whether you're too high or not, uh, is it ends up sitting on the market for a longer period of time. And ultimately, if, if you wanna go down that road, that strategy, you have to keep in mind that your property is likely to sit on the market longer while you're fishing, while you're waiting for that one high offer to come along. Now, what's happening in a buyer's mind and a buyer's agent mind is when we see a property that has a longer days on market, than the average, so for example, say the average in that area is seven days or 10 days, we see your property, it's at 30 days. The first thing that's going through my mind or an agent's mind is why. What is the reason, what is the negative reason that this property is still on the market 
when everything else is selling. So our first thoughts are we are looking for red flags. So we might be looking at the property on paper and say, okay, you know, it's not that big of a property, maybe it's that. Uh, oh, it doesn't look good through the pictures, that room looks like it needs a lot of work, maybe it's that. Oh, it's a weird floor plan, can't really place furniture, maybe it's that. You can see how mentally I'm going through all of these negative things. I just talked about how important a first impression is on a property, and that's not just a first impression when you walk into a property. The first impression has to be the first thing you see, and that's why some of us agents, the agents that you know, treat our our properties or our listings with the same investment mindset that the that our clients have invested into their property. That's why we're spending so much money on the photographers we use, hiring the best in the city, the best videographers. The reason we do that is because we need to attract people on a first impression basis on paper before they even show up into the home. So the longer that you're sitting on the market, the more people are trying to figure out what negative reason is throwing people off. And so it has a negative energy surrounding it. If you even get the showing, a buyer's gonna come in and they're gonna be looking for why. Why? Why hasn't anyone else bought this? If you look at sale prices and you look at record prices and getting the highest prices, most of the properties that get there, they get there by pricing low and receiving multiple offers. And nine times out of 10, you will get a better price on the property if you price low and two or three people write an offer than if you price high and you just wait around and get that one offer. Because if you wait around, you have extra days on market, that one offer, it's not gonna be at asking price, it's gonna be well below. The terms and conditions, they know they're not competing, it's gonna be all in favor of the buyer. And so you're gonna have an offer in front of you that you're forced to work with that is not in any way ideal for yourself. It's really important when you're pricing a property to be realistic about where the market is at. And this is why it's important to work with an agent that understands the market, knows the statistics, knows where pricing is at. And I'll give you a really good example. If we look at condos, for instance, Metro Vancouver condos, month over month, they went up just under 1%. So if you look at that, you know, and you have a property that sold very comparable to yours, sold last month for 600,000. Assuming that prices go up another 1%, which has been the trajectory, your property this month would be worth 606. It's not a big jump when we're talking about little marginal gaps. So if you were to even price at, you look at that comp and say the realtor is saying, okay, well, let's do 615 or 620, market's hot, it's buzzing you know, things are going up, they're not going up that much. So you price yourself at 615, 620, you end up being just like what I talked about, that home that's sitting around on the market that everyone is trying to poke holes at. So this is why, again, incredibly important to work with an agent that knows the data. The other reason the data is really important when listing a property is you can combat any sort of um, you know, value discrepancies from a buyer's offer when you're counter offering. So, you know, in my process, when I'm listing my client's properties, obviously I haven't worked with every agent out there, but I have yet to find an agent that's been able to put me on the spot knowing the comparable sales better than I do. I already know the properties they're going to show me with their offer. And I already know why my home is better. And so all of these things come together is when you're working with, you know, selling your property, you want the best possible result. It truly is a team effort. So when I look at it, I look at my clients and, you know, the amount of time, the amount of money, um, all of the expenses, all the memories that they've made in a home. You know, I feel like it's my duty to also invest in that listing. So I spend heavily on the marketing. I spend heavily on the sponsored posts. I've spend a lot of time on my social media, obviously, and I do that so that I can put my clients' properties in front of more people. I get some videos that hit 300, 400, 500,000 views. I don't do this for ego or for optics. The reason I build this up is so I can place clients' properties in front of the most set of eyes. And even if you're working in a market, a hot market, um, where a lot of people out there will say, oh, well, you can just put a sign in your yard and you're gonna sell no problem. 
And that might be true in some markets. You may just sell the home. But what I talked about earlier is the more people you have through the home, the more chances you are to get more than one offer. And when people are competing with others, they are going to pay a higher price. So I will get showing requests directly from my social media, not just through the MLS. There's other agents as well that are doing some strong stuff on social media. And it's all in an effort to get more people into your home. It's not an exact math or an exact science, but what I've found lately in the market is generally speaking for every 10 people that come through an open house roughly will receive one offer. Again, it's not an exact science, it does depend on the property. So the difference between having 10 people through an open house or 20, it's significant because now you have people competing. So it's no longer a market, we're no longer in a situation as a seller where you can just hire you know, your relative or you hire an agent at a discount because if you sit down with that agent that you are going to list with for a discount, I can guarantee you at the same time they are going through in their head how they are gonna discount the service that they are gonna provide for you. And that really is the biggest mistake is not going with an agent who is gonna invest in your property just as you have invested in your own property. So make sure you don't make any of these mistakes and I assure you, you will sell for a higher price, you will get a better result. So there you have it guys. I hope you learned something in this video and you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button because what that does is it takes the video and it sends it out to more people so they can learn from it as well. And if you enjoy weekly real estate content like this, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss next week's video. And lastly, again, if you're in the Vancouver area or the Fraser Valley, you wanted to work with me to help you buy and sell real estate, you can book me for a free call in the Calendly link or just send me a text Give me a call, shoot me a message, whatever's easiest for you. I'd love to connect with you, but I want to thank you for taking time to watch this week's video, and I look forward to seeing you next week.